This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast, episode 485. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the wonderful Beach View that is actually sunny at this time of day. Thank you, time change that I discover when I'm on the road in some other state as I do almost every year. Uh, with me back in also recovering from the uh, uh, time change and not yet quarantined, he is John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitters. He is the uh, Mr. Fancy Pants technical know-how at uh, Big Bank International Esquire. I'm just roaming the streets. Just roaming the streets without a care. I, hey, I'm, I, just, I just flew. So just flew. it was the cleanest flight I've ever been on. Now, smelled so nice. So you were saying that people were wiping down. People are wiping down everything. Now, did you think? Did you feel like it wasn't just the people wiping it down, keeping it clean? Do you feel like the airline took? Extra I don't know. Care? I couldn't. I don't, well, I got an email from Southwest saying that they did, as well as an email from every one of the hotels that I belong to, um, uh, uh, about how cleanly they're going to be. And uh, and uh, and and no, no, I couldn't smell anything beyond the the wipes, the Clorox wipes. So, so everything there was, smelled like Clorox. everything smelled like Clorox. So I'm just like, well, everybody wiped down around me. I feel okay. So I, I'm, I'm good for that. Your nose nose burned of bleach. I spent two days in a field uh, with porta potties. Not scary at all, but there was plenty of hand sanitizer and stuff all around. So, <laughs> but then there's finger sandwiches. So I don't know where it wins. I don't know where this stops. But either way, just don't touch your face. Don't touch your face. I touch my face all the time. I touched Missy face, Missy's face today, just to make sure we were even. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, you can see my Twitter. There was a little bit of an exchange about that today. Anyways, it is the awesome cast where we talk about technology and not the things that we're afraid of today. Uh, but that's probably going to creep in there too. Actually, there is a story about it. But we're going to have some fun. And uh, <laughs> in, even in on the midst of a pandemic, p- pandemic, there are awesome things. Uh, but this is the awesome cast. Check out awesomecast.com where you can find us. Uh, you can find this and past episodes and subscribe to us on your favorite podcatcher or um, on your YouTube or Facebook for video versions. You can also hit us up at awesomecast on the Twitter, Facebook. Uh, again, uh, a lot of dis- uh, the shows are on there as well as the awesome cast Facebook group where there's a lot of stories throughout the week and a lot of conversations. So you can drop in there and be a part of that. And uh, we use a lot of those stories and conversations here in the show and it really inspires what we do here every Tuesday. And we are here every Tuesday live on Facebook Live at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And of course, we are streaming on other platforms on uh, on uh, uh, Twitch, on 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 Twitter, Periscope, YouTube, and uh, you can be on any of those and watch us wherever it is. Because I know not everybody is on Facebook for one reason or another, or they can't get on their television or something like that. Uh, so of course, you can check us out there every Tuesday. But the big conversation is happening in the Facebook page um, on the live stream. And uh, of course, and including I see uh, Brandon out in the Kansas City's out there. Dave Potter, uh, Jen Carlin's, Matt Bish is hanging out there. Amanda Narcissi, our good friends, uh, all hanging out uh, in the chat room here tonight. Safe in the quarantine. Safe of their home. in the quarantine of your homes. We we can verify that watching this uh, this show or listening to it is is safe for your quarantine if you're uh, working from home or whatever the case may be. Oh boy! <laughs> also, thank you to our um, awesome audio partners, our friends at the 405media.com that are carrying us and uh, streaming us every day at noon Eastern time, and our friends at postindustrial.com, postindustrial audio, sharing some of the finest of uh, podcasts over there. Again, uh, recent episodes, I got to give have a hand in uh, uh, helping produce, uh, giving them a give them a hand over there um, while they were uh, uh, short a uh, producer, I guess, for a couple weeks. Our friends at uh, Hungry Girl big city and the city theater uh some really good conversations going on there uh including an episode with millie's ice cream who got to hang out in their uh, offices a few weeks ago uh to record that so go check out those conversations some great podcasts uh that we've uh, uh had a hand in helping out there a little bit um 
Also, and then that's through the Sidekick Media Services, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you to our Patreon supporters that are supporting the show. Um, man, it was a crazy month for Patreon between this and uh, over on the Wrestling Mayhem show. Thank you to our supporters of the awesome cast, our friends at the Coffee Club level, Matt Weller, John Diggy DeGore, and John Carmen, and our friends at the Fan of the Show level, the longest-running Patreon supporter, Michael Fedor, and PGHMuseums.org. Thank you so much, guys, for supporting this show. It really means a lot to us. helps us keep the lights on here in the server's page for uh so we can keep delivering it to you uh please go support the show if you're interested over at patreon.com slash awesome cast so let's get into our awesome things of the week chill i want to go first because i had so much fun <laughs> yours is way more so awesome i than was mine. in florida and usually I go, I go around and i'm hitting wrestling shows and i did catch a wrestling show i actually did get to see uh nxt wwe's nxt film live from full sale university that's not my awesome thing, but it's also that's my awesome thing for the other show, uh, which was cool to see that because, I mean, it's a school. It's a production school down there in Winter Park, Florida, just um, east of Orlando, and uh, it was uh, it was cool to see that. But I also had the opportunity, thanks to, and a shout out to my friend uh, Ray uh, over, you check out um, Flycam DFW on all your social media, YouTube, he'll have stuff on it too. Um, but thanks to him, I got to go see the SpaceX Falcon 9, Falcon 1? No, Falcon, SpaceX Falcon 1, I believe that's the name. And, um, um, rocket launched. Now this is a supply mission. And this was the last, they started, I believe, this model in 2012. And this is the last run of this rendition of it. And this is the rocket, Chilla, that lands itself. Like the first stage breaks off mm -hmm. and it lands itself. We we always see the 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 landings on the boats that don't go well. Yeah, the, the, so this is fun. This was the 50th successful landing of that rocket. You should get a pin or something. I should get a just pin. For, just for a bin. <laughs> having been there this was this is very much a <laughs> this is very much a uh uh yeah where's my gold star yes. um this is very much a a, a non-monumental launch i mean they're growing up once a month basically at this point right so so there's that and it's weather permitting this was actually delayed and this is at 11 50 on friday night in uh and we were 11 miles from cape canaveral or from the launch site on camp Can like the we were close to cape canaveral it's a big site there is like 40 launch pads this I didn't know. I finally looked at a map of the of the launch site at Cape Canaveral, and yeah, there's like they were on like 39 or 40 that they launched from on on, on almost the northern uh, most part of the uh, the facility. So, and I do have some video if you're with us, and if you check out uh, we over on our uh, well, my Facebook page, you can see some video. This was this was shot with my Panasonic, a little shaky because it's 11 miles away, and I'm zoomed in, and I'm also trying to look at this thing while it's happening so i can actually see it with my eyes until it blinds me because it is like looking at in the sun at this point so you see it uh take off there and you saw there were the four towers around it um um from from where it was uh so this was a cool thing and then when you get up there about part way up you and you start seeing it you know, with a little bit of the trail and everything up there and then at a certain point i don't know how well this is going to come off but you actually do see the rockets separate here and and if we're seeing it in person and you can see you can see a lot of that kind of waviness around it and it becomes kind of a circle there's a lot a lot of kind of blueness to it and it looks like a black hole of sorts as they're separating from it and you see the dock going down that's the one uh separating out the land as the other one goes further up so being 11 miles away like how if you were to compare it to be being as loud as something else like is it being at the airport and hearing a plane take you off heard it, it was it, it was a very loud it's it's it was as if you were um it, it's as if you were uh it, it, this is a localized thing but if you were at uh you ever been at the walmart in robinson when a plane flies overhead yeah it was like that Okay, so not, it really was like that. You could talk to the person next to you, and they could hear. Yeah, it. you can if like, you if you listen, you can hear the rumble. I don't know if you hear the rumble on on the on the rocket landing, but uh, that's on there too. Uh, I have separate videos. Like we have the when I set up an iPhone um, to have that take off, and I actually cropped it in a little bit uh, since it was a 4K shot, and it was it was you know as much as it was until it went off frame. But I also have video on there of the rocket landing. Probably not as impressive. You see it come down and and everything, but you don't you don't get to see it 
as clear as you saw the actual facility when the when the takeoff was happening on my video too. Again, this is my Panasonic, and actually this is this is a shot of the Panasonic that I'm using. So it's like it's a, it's a bigger camera, has a long lens to it, has a three chip uh, to it, so it's a nice HD camera. So, um, but again, on a tripod, it was very windy, which also kind of contributed to to my shakiness, other than just my excitement in general. Um, and this is actually a video if you guys are with us. So this this is a shot of I don't know if you saw this one. Yeah, Chilla. Uh, this is this is the rocket landing itself. So and and I'm actually right beside, kind of you know, ironic with a lot of the um, uh, uh, news this week. This this is actually right beside where the cruise lines are. It's like right to the right there, those lights over there. That's where like the Disney cruises and Carnival and all of them are. And, and it was on the other side of the facility, so it was kind of, pretty much kind of over the horizon where it landed. But you see that for the most part coming down. So and that was eight minutes later. Like we waited. There's nothing. There's like I, nothing. You, you hear dark, a little. There's another bit of a flash when the second stage breaks off, too. But that just breaks off and burns up. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. And there's just waiting, and then you just see that thing come down. Uh, just mere moments before I probably hit record there on that video that's on my page. So, yeah, this was and yeah, this was a once in a lifetime because I mean this is my second time I've been in Florida. And this was on the other side. I was in Lakeland, Florida, uh, probably about 45 minutes from Tampa. Came in through Orlando. So we passed, you know, over, over to Orlando all the way to the other coast. So, um, which is about, it was about an hour and a half drive from where we were in Lakeland. That's not bad, though. No, that's not bad for what is. For what you get to see, mm -hmm. it's not bad at all. It's not like country roads. No, no. It's all highway, toll roads, you know, uh, six lane uh, highways, things like that. So, um, but it was it was a lot of fun, a really cool experience, and just very fortunate just having that opportunity. And somebody that already mapped out the entire plan. Because if I decided to go to this, who knows where I would have ended up, right? And even they said to a point where you probably could have seen it from our hotel rooms in Lakeland two hours away or an hour and a half away. You know, it would be like a dot but, or something. But, um, but yeah. Aliens. <laughs> it's like, what's that? You know, <laughs> uh, sit on the, I sit on, sit on the, uh, uh, sit on my, my, my patio. I had a patio. Like I had a, I had a, sit out on the fifth floor where I was. I had a nice holiday in. That is, so, sound, does sound nice. <laughs> but um, no, definitely a really cool thing. So I got to see a SpaceX and I was standing and we're watching a SpaceX. You might, I don't know if it's on the video, but the guy next to us just like realizes like I'm sitting here watching a SpaceX standing next to a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, this was a good one. Of course, the next day there was news that the uh, spaceship prototype collapsed on itself. They were doing a stress test on it. So, I mean, it's kind of a and uh, Elon Musk apparently tweeted, um, well, get some tape. <laughs> so but that's part of this is I mean, there's a lot. You know, we always see the rocket explosions and there's lots of those. But I mean, they're they're really kind of a startup mentality, moving fast and breaking things. It just when they break things, it's very spectacular. Right. On this flight, by the way, um, there were multiple things like I was we were watching a lot of the NASA feeds uh, beforehand. Um, we should have a tally for every time I touch my face on the show. Uh, <laughs> so, but uh, there was a NASA's feed, a NASA feed. And there was like, oh, there's this going up and this experiment. And Adidas shoes are going up to experiment how their shoes operate in space or something. It's like, OK, OK, Adidas. So like this is the, the point where we're like basically companies are paying to send their stuff into space. How much how much of those is that pair of shoes going to go? Oh, jeez. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, but they can say, you know, now they can say, oh, the show, the, the shoe that was in space or something when they when they put this thing out. So um, but anyways, no, that was that was my fun experience with SpaceX. You can see my shaky footage over on my Facebook page. I think I put I put my uh, uh, the iPhone one over on my Twitter as well uh, at Sorgatron over there. So you should just say it was shaky from the the rumble of. of yeah, it's not my hand and my no. keeping the looking up at it. And, it was and so everything. loud. It was loud. It was very loud. It didn't it didn't shake me, but I, I don't know. Maybe that's just I don't get shaken by like drums or anything anymore like I used to. So, but um, you're more sturdy than you used I'm to be. I'm sturdier than I used to be. <laughs> that's it's a good term for it. Chilla, what is your more grounded awesome thing of the week? So mine, <laughs> mine is so grounded you plug it into a TV. What? Um, so we've talked about this on the show before, and I know we don't always talk. We don't like to necessarily talk about um, what may not be coming out. But mm -hmm. I was so excited when I saw this, I couldn't not talk about it. 
So we've talked about Chromecast before and my pain points with Chromecast where like I want something that's kind of self-sufficient. I don't have to cast to it Mm -hmm. and worry, you know, I leave the room um, or leave the house. Like I wanted, I want something that I turn on. I have control over. I don't have to worry about having another device to, to to have there to kind of kick things off. Mm -hmm. Um, Nine to five Google announced an exclusive that Google plans the new Chromecast Ultra to be based on Android TV with a remote. Hmm. So they're saying that, um, in fact, the remote passed through the FCC today. And we know, we know we have Google I.O. coming up. I mean, so this is going to be, it, it, we're basically looking at, not, not that it's a stick. I mean, the, the ultras that we see are the circle with the... It's with still the, a circle. With, it's still a circle. Still with a the, circle. With the, with the uh, plug coming off of it for, for the HDMI. But we're talking about basically an Android TV equivalent of a Fire TV stick. Is that right? That's that's what I'm reading. So YouTube TV, Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Hulu, mm-hmm. all of the apps that you would be able to get on Android, mm-hmm. you will now potentially have on the Chromecast. Okay. Um, Makes sense. I like that. Along with, and they, they, they compared the controller to like the Daydream View remote or an <laughs> Apple TV remote. Another thing that's not around anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then maybe that's what they're doing with all those old remotes. They're now just bundling them with. with <laughs> hey, 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 Stu! All these are laying around. What are we going to do with them? Hey, what are we doing with those new Chromecasts? Well, but they, yeah. they're saying that the remote has a microphone, a dedicated Google Assistant button, um, and it'll also be programmable to your TV. Mm-hmm. So if you're familiar with like the Apple TV controller, you tell Apple TV what other components you have, and when you right. hit the on button, it turns right. right TV and the receiver or whatever devices you have on. Um, they're saying it will work much like the same. So I, I'm super interested in this. I'm hoping they keep the price somewhat comparable to the existing devices. It will support 4K content and the typical Chromecast, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. So awesome to me, it's it's exciting, and I I hope you see this soon. It'd be nice to see that just for like I, I you know I like having multiple platforms. I've been playing a little bit with my old Fire Stick, but if it's something that is still as affordable as a Chromecast, we're talking like thirty five forty dollars. I don't need a four K one, but I imagine it'll probably be four K. But it, it'd be nice to upgrade because mm-hmm. my old I have an original and the second Chromecast between here and home, and it, it's nice to have them on hand. You know, whether you're traveling and can throw them in a TV or or just having them around the studio, the office, things like that to be just like, oh, I'll just kick this over here. Right. So, um, no, I, 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 I like I like those and I, I love and, and there's different Android apps, right, that mm-hmm. you can use. So if that has that ability and it's a little newer, so it'll be a little faster. I think that'd be cool. Um, Amanda's in the chat room asking, how well will it interact with Google backup? Like when you take a pic of your pixel can you see it on your chromecast i believe so if you're doing an android tv thing that should have some google photos capabilities in it right i'm guessing you could even say okay mm -hmm, yeah show me my my recent photos yeah yeah should be able to go out and i mean you can already kind of do that with chromecast can't you Yep. like i I think i know i can at least cast from my phone okay um (laughs) i had a fun thing sorry um i happened to be so you gave me that big monitor so i have nice speakers now when I I'm listening to something here in the in the office, and so it, this is this is a cinema display, like an older cinema disp- display. It basically feels like a nice, um, the last model um, um, iMac, not the new thin ones, and it has the nice speakers in it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I was listening to this week in Google, and every time they said hmm, Google, it it's the 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 google, the google home is right above it on the shelf, and it kept setting it off, and they kept saying, hey, G. Um, and they were referencing, hey, Google, you know, what if you said, hey, hey, hmm, um, um, what is my car doing? What's the RPMs on my car? Like it was some kind of attachment that was happening there. And it kept kicking it off in the, in the home was like, oh, I can't do that. Oh, I can't do that. But it was setting it off. So good thing I didn't have that set up. <laughs> so I'm wondering. They usually mute those things in there. Like yeah, they when you say hey, train, they do. And then. Like on TV commercials, there's a special tone yes. that we can't hear. I saw one. Have you had one where a TV commercial will be playing, say, hey, A-Train, 
Like, cause one time I'm watching TV and the, the echo is in the living room and it's off from the TV, but on that side of room. And I, I saw it light up, but it didn't respond. It didn't respond, but it did hear and start up. Huh? I've never, I have never noticed that. Mm -hmm. Um, now we have, we've moved to the show Mm -hmm. five. Mm -hmm. five It's a dot. It's a, it's a new dot. Um, but the show five has like the more like five inch screen and I, it doesn't to me have the light that you would normally get around the top. It's right. It's like a small banner on the LCD that comes up and waves back and forth. Mm-hmm. So you can't really see it kind of like the, uh, as well as like the auto box. has that it's, it's, it's the, the kit back mm-hmm. and forth, right? Yeah. The, the, the night rider Knight look rider. to it, the blue night night rider to it. So, but I'll tell you what was setting ours off was first we had would left the home shopping network on yeah. and they were selling like home automation and they oh. were going and they were selling all through. So like I actually, at one point in time, I think like throughout the evening they set off all three. <laughs> <laughs> Cause they're saying, Hey, this works on this. This works on this. Yep. Right. Wow. Uh, that's hey. It's becoming more persistent, right? Well, anyways, hey, you know what? Also, you know what? I can't ask my A train to get me yet. Uh, and I know you can with some places, but we need to get the upgrade. We need to got to talk to our friends at Slice on Broadway right here in Pittsburgh. You know, I'm sure there's some way. Actually, there probably is some way for us to order it through, out, for, through Echo or Google or something. Something we can connect through Grubhub or something. Now I think about it. But, hey, let's experiment with it. That's your, that's your homework for next week, Chilla. How do I order my Slice on Broadway? Through uh, voice activation, but probably I, I'd imagine. Yeah, again, if you, if you can get, connect Grubhub to it, maybe uh, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, Beachview, Carnegie, East End, PNC Park, right up the street. Our good friends here in Beachview have been supporting this podcast for the majority of its ten years in existence, feeding our guests here. Chilla, Chilla gets a taste of Beachview. He may he may be checking out uh, some other tastes of Beachview when he walks in, but he's still got to get that slice. Uh, as well, and our good friends uh, uh, throughout the evening here. Um, even, even well, the show after this, um, our, 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 unfortunately, we get our pizza before this show, so it's rather cold by then. And uh, we ordered some slice when we were doing a video game night a couple weeks ago. And he was very excited. He's like, I finally get to have warm slice on Broadway. It's even better. Uh, so. You need to find like one of those old... Who was it? Who had the heating bags? Like, was it Domino's oh. or Pizza Hut? Well, I mean, you just get a heating bag. I mean, we could just... I don't know, put it on a heater or something. Yeah, you need you know? like one of those bags that you can plug in. There you go. Like the the delivery people. I can't who there was a deliver I don't know if it was Papa John's. It was somebody had I don't know. So though let's not let's stop naming other pizza Sorry. places during the slice spot because they're not slice on Broadway here supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. So who are they? Uh but no, thank you to our friends there and thank you to them for um for supporting the awesome cast amanda is in the chat room this is what i love we're at that point where the just the chat room answers all of our questions for us um is so so amanda's saying siri shortcut you you can customize the pizza place it calls there you go uh slam through the door like otis in the chamber match that's the wrong show dave that's that's for later we'll, we'll talk He's about a top that fan he could say what he, he wants. is a top fan yes but that's referencing a different show so um anyways uh it is time for to check in with our buddy at the game um of course chachi chachi got slapped on the ass by a wrestler this weekend <laughs> so <laughs> He had a fun one, but he's also, uh, when he's not getting fresh with the wrestlers or they're getting fresh with him, uh, he's also uh, going through 1,001 games. He's up to Yoshi Touch and Go. So this is this is stuff that <laughs> Yoshi Touch and Go, also not cool in today's day and age. Um, don't touch your Yoshi kids. Um, but uh, yeah, he's, he's deep into the um, uh, Nintendo DS, Legend of Zelda, or- Oracle Seasons and Ages. Um, things like that. Mario golf. I'm not, so I, I, I have a DS that I got like a while ago and I have like three games for it. So this is not an era that I'm familiar with. Are you, are you, were you a DS guy? I was, so I went from game boy to game gear. Mm. Well, no, so, well still that's where the DS is like the mid two thousands. I never got the DS. No, no. My buddy had the, the turbo graphics 16 portable. 
<laughs> oh yeah, they played the full cartridge. Yes, yes, um, yes. Um, Always my no, I one. never, I never had the DS, or, and I never had a Game Boy Advanced either. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I got one eventually. I, again, like late after everything was through, I got that Advanced. But the thing I love about the Advance is you can play the original carts on it still. So, in the DS, you can play the advanced carts on it. It's a little bigger screen. So, it, it, you know, never had a 3DS. I should probably pick up a 3DS sooner or later and start playing with that, pick up some old games. I did pick up an old Vita. I still oh, yeah? I, still I, rocking I, your old Vita? I play that on occasion. Yeah, yeah. Is it the, the I forget, is it the newer Vita or is it the, like, old ones that still it's not take the, the PSP. Discs? It's not the, oh. The Vita. The Vita. So, the PSP had, like, the disc, the game disc. There's a PlayStation the, Portable, but then there was a PSP Vita, correct? Yeah, I have the okay. Vita. You have the, the later Vita one. has more of like an SD card. SD, and it's more digital based. Memory yeah. Um, yeah. game. Yeah. Um, I, I picked it up. I picked it up because I wanted to remote play my PlayStation 4. Mm-hmm. And it did not work mm-hmm. that well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then GameStop had like a ton of five dollar game so i'm like oh i'll pick this up oh i'll pick this up and now it's just like <laughs> it's sitting there and i in fact i also got some games that are like the three to five dollar indie games on mm-hmm. my playstation that's where it, it, sony was always really good about the indie games weren't they like i got some i got some three to five dollar indie games that christopher liked to play mm-hmm. and they actually were cross play so i could play them on the vita and on the playstation so that's another fun thing. Awesome. Uh, let's see what else we got here. We got a little bit of uh, we got a little bit of stories from our awesome cast Facebook group. Thank you everybody for contributing over there. And uh, let me see if there's a video game one. No. Uh, okay. Let's start with the fun one. Brian Crawford, our good friend at PGHMuseums.org, uh, shared this one. And oh, I need to get the other site here. I need to get the one that actually has the video and stuff. How about a dog collar that turns your dog's barks into cuss words? Is it like on a screen? No, no, no. It's one of those. It's a it's a dog collar, and it has a speaker on it. Here, we'll pull up a video here. And it's just when it detects a bark, it says a swear word. You would think that that would just cause an endless loop of bark, swear, bark, swear, bark, swear. <laughs> you would think, right? Um, yeah. So, no. It, 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 what it's probably doing is detecting noise from the dog. And it just spouts out a swear word, right? But there's a fun video in it. So apparently this company, um, MHD, well, M M S uh, C H F. This is a weird Mischief. freaking name. Mischief. Oh, thank you. Thank you. They make novelty, um, items. Basically, this is a $60 thing. And even the video that they, um, wow. The website, the website is very strange. What? That, what did you see? Did you click the corner? Yeah. Yeah. So this website comes up and it's all like this giant text. And I feel like I'm getting hacked. I bet these are products. I'm going to click on Jesus Sues. The customized Nike. It's like a bunch of dates. Oh, are they the dates? I think these are releases of there. And yeah. The, the, so customized Nike Air Max 97s with 60cc of holy water from the River Jordan and the Soul. And there's a list of late nights with Seth Myers. I guess these are places that they were featured. What? So yeah, they play. They, they basically, this company makes viral novelty items that you can purchase. And including the jesus shoes and the um the bark oh yeah the dates are probably like stuff that's coming out it's like they have an item an item a month it looks like or a couple a couple a month wow this is weird this is an interesting place um but no you can get that it's uh they're selling it for 60 dollars apparently and uh i i kind of <laughs> i want to get one for my mom for her dogs <laughs> so uh, but no, there you go. Cuss caller. That was uh, contributed by, yeah, Brian, I already said that. Um, let's see. The Twitter is testing, Amanda uh, submits, uh, Twitter is testing a Instagram stories-like function called Fleets. Are you, that will expire after 24 hours of the tweet. Are you ready for this? You know what? You know what I would like this for? People that are running like 
contests. Yeah. So you don't junk up your feet after uh, that. So my feet, like, hey, this is the next 10 people will, if they respond to this, be put into a thing for a, mm-hmm. whatever code. This, I, I think this is, I mean, not just where I want something that's, that I don't want to be around forever. I like this idea. Mm-hmm. Um, so they started in Brazil. Um, starting that test on iOS and Android, and uh, it's yeah, it well most of this is in Brazilian, so I can't really keep up with it. But uh, anyways, yeah, it's, it's gonna it's gonna be you actually have a button for fleets. It posts. It's a more visual kind of thing. It looks like, um, and I think it's gonna pop up from what I can tell in your feed, and yeah, it will disappear in like twenty four hours. The fleet video must be using fleets because it says this media is no longer available and it's yeah oh really on yours i mind it i just have it on mine came up interesting uh so my and, and if you can check the 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 visual at the top it, there's the looks like if you're i'm guessing this is going to be a tab in twitter um much like your um search and everything and, and day of and everything and there's there's kind of what you're familiar with with the circles across the top of people's faces when there's fleets i guess so yeah, have, Amanda says that we we stumbled on the dark web with that other website. I think so. Um, I it's another. I'm sure it'll do fine for people that live in Twitter, but um, man, I can't. They're getting too complicated. Um, somebody asked me how do I how do I post on Instagram, and I know this person is already interacting on Instagram for their account, and it was literally oh, it just hit the plus at the bottom. Then I realized there's a lot more than the plus at the bottom of Instagram now. Mm-hmm. Like there's just too much functionality when it used to be simple, right? Um, just like how do I tweet? Hit the tweet button. Which one's the tweet button? Like that's the question we have to ask now in these things. But I mean that's everything. Everything starts as a simple function. They just keep adding on. Well, they need on. to keep growing. They gotta keep growing, and then it turns into, I mean, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook have such familiar, familiar, or similar uh, uh, functionality across the board now, right? So. Uh, thanks Amanda for passing that along. And then Podner, both Podner and Steve sent this one along, man. (laughs) So, and if I can click on it, if I can click on it, maybe I don't want to click on this. And by the way, this has click through links. Don't click on them, Chilla. If you're, well, I shouldn't because I'm, I'm live here on the internet. You can't see my screen. I can click on whatever I want. Kind of. I don't think I want to put the image. I can't put the image up. Uh, we're just going to talk about coronavirus porn is going viral on Pornhub. Because, of course, it is. This is not one of the safe for work for stories. Um, yeah, there's a lot of body cam CDC agent-based um, investigation. And I think you can guess what comes next. So, Because, of course, everything, everything, that's, everything in the world, there's porn for it. And, uh, and uh, welcome, everybody. Just jumped in the chat room at that point. So... Um, thank you again, Dave Podner and Steve from Bold Sports for sharing that too. You guys, again, please share your stories throughout the week over the, the Awesome Cast Facebook page, and uh, we will awkwardly uh, uh, talk about them too. Uh, so, um, give a shout out. Hey guys, you know, I mentioned some of the stuff we were doing at the uh, beginning of the show with some other podcasts. That's through our uh, sister company here with Sidekick Media Services, helping you be the sidekick in your superhero project, doing a lot of things like podcasts, like this trip. Uh, I was in Florida, not just to go see Rockets, but also to film some collegiate competitions with uh, some great uh, experimental uh, uh, model planes with uh, Lockheed Martin and uh, SAE International down there for Aero Design East, and that's part of Sidekick Media Service. A lot of business productions and services that we're offering over there. House right here conveniently in Sorgatron Media Studios in Beachview. Go check out what we've been up to over at SidekickMediaServices.com. Follow us on the social media. Uh, we're on most major social media platforms to see what we've been up to and what we can help with you in your superhero project. Thank you so much. Uh, for everybody that has been getting a hold of us, we have had some very interesting projects come across our desk in the last month, and uh, very excited to be working with all of them. So let's get into uh, the back of the book stories here, Chilla. What do you want to hit up first? Um, do, 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 do. you want me to pick one of mine? Or, so I, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. I was super impressed with the so the Nintendo PlayStation price that that thing went for did you did you get to touch it i didn't when get it was when here it was it um 
replay FX. Mm-hmm. I did get to touch it and I got to look at the so cartridges and real real quick recap. This is the Sony PlayStation um uh prototype, the famous one that's been talked about for the last several years that was found at an auction. And this is uh, you know, uh, uh Sony was initially supposed to work with Nintendo to create a CD um add-on collaboration thing, much like how Sega CD happened. And things like that, and then they broke apart, didn't do it. N64 happened, Sony took all the technology, and it became the Sony PlayStation. Why didn't I even have a picture of it? Here's a picture of it for you guys that are joining us here on video. So this was actually doing kind of a world tour when they found it, and they was here with Replay FX. So was it this... There's only one? There is only one that anybody knows about. We saw pictures of this in Nintendo Power back in the day. And that's the only reason we know what this is, other than it says Sony PlayStation has a Nintendo controller and cartridge slot, right? And Famicom, to be clear, is more of a Japanese uh, model here. So, other than this, this is the only known one in existence publicly. And uh, like I said, I was doing the tour. Uh, they had a game that was on it that wasn't even like no games were produced for this, right? It didn't really work. Nothing was made in a CD format for a Nintendo hardware like this. You couldn't put a Sony PlayStation game in because that was a different development, different hardware than what this is. Because this was basically... They had like six cartridges there, I think. Yes, but they were, I believe... Like prototype games. They were prototype games and they were um, they were indie games that they formatted to work on it through the Super Nintendo part of it. Okay. So you could play Super Nintendo games on this because that part just worked like a Super Nintendo. But the CD part, which I think didn't even work, and they were trying to fix it. But again, how far can you get? Because there are no, quote, Super Nintendo CD games in existence. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, uh, Chilla, I know you were checking the story. Can you hit the details there real quick? So, And it does confirm. there was. So there were 200 of these made. <laughs> And when the deal fell through, they destroyed 199 of them. This is the last. It, <laughs> somebody in, in somebody 90, stuck one in their backpack. Yeah. The two video game giants uh, announced 91 they would work together, but only produced 200 before the deal fell through. The other 199 prototypes purported to exist were allegedly destroyed when partnership between nintendo and maybe Sony. they're actually buried they're in, in somebody's desert. basement yeah they're all, exactly. all 199 of them somewhere somewhere but but again they were development models and things maybe these were going to go they, they, they probably they were probably going to go out to developers right mm-hmm. and and didn't but either way got to touch it i, I was surprised because it was there and like i was we were just like looking at it and the guy's like you want to touch it? And he took it out of the case and let us hold it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, are you kidding well, they were, me? They were letting people play on it. Yeah, they were letting people play yeah. on it. But it was still under a glass case. Mm-hmm. And he just like took it out of the case and like, can't, I think Chachi was with me. I'm just like, oh God, I'm touching it. <laughs> you know? Um, so when this came out, it, it went for $360,000, was that? Which actually people kind of thought it was going to go for more. Um, a fellow game collector, Greg McLemore, 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 McLemore? Yes, just like the artist. Uh, found it. He's the guy that founded Pets.com and Toys.com during the dot-com boom, <laughs> of course. Uh, he is going to use it, apparently, to start a video game museum. So I can go see it again someday. Um, but no, that's out, cool. He outbid the Palmer Oculus Lucky VR yep, yep. founder. I love there's a tweet in here from, uh, I'm currently the highest bidder on this. Who are the other nutters who keep bidding against me? <laughs> So from uh, uh, somewhere during that auction. So, no, that's cool. And and I, if, to, if we can evoke the Indiana Jones, this belongs in a museum. And I'm happy that it's getting there. Because it's part of history. Mm-hmm. It really is. Um, one way or another. And it's cool. It's not just on somebody, some rich guy's shelf. And who knows what Palmer Lucky was going to do with it. Uh, so <laughs> it's going to be on some rich guy's shelf probably, right? Um, anyways. So uh, there's uh, <laughs> so there's that part of it. Uh, you were you were kind of impressed. Um, some iOS 14 stuff keeps leaking in iOS 13 betas. And it I seems. I don't what remember. I don't remember this ever happening before. Which is it's catching me completely off guard. Especially because we're still three months away from like a WWDC. Mm-hmm. But people keep. I understand when people find code about like the next. 
the next model number for the iPad or like the next something that's coming out in the, in the next month. Yeah. But yeah. You figure iOS 14 isn't going to ship beta until beginning of June, depending on what we do with WWDC. Right. And then we're not going to see a final shipment until September when the phone, the next so, phone ships. So we're talking but about we're already seeing. Yeah. So the, and this is, this is people are basically reverse engineering pieces of code. In the betas. In the right? iOS 13 betas. Yes. But, and this is something that typically happens in the betas for a, like, hey, 13 to 14, 12 to 13, when the hardware has not come out yet. You'll see references to things and functionality that would be in, IO, let's say, the iPhone 11 before we knew that there were going to be three lenses. Maybe there was a reference to it, right? About, like, the functionality that mm -hmm. that would lead to. And we're getting stories about, uh, and I didn't even read the story. There was something about new hardware. Cause, again, I don't read these stories. I know you get more into them. Like, there was some allusions to new hardware hardware and things like that right well they're saying for the ipad pro it's going to have you know the keyboard with a trackpad yes and the mouse and the, you know, more cursor, mouse functionality you know, there's going to be more cursor support the one that i thought was interesting was they're they're starting to see in the code under the accessibility feature functions mm -hmm. um it will be able to detect important sounds like fire alarms, sirens, door knocks, doorbells, even crying babies, and then translate those alerts into haptic feedback. Or I know people that are, are deaf or hard of hearing and they have their like you, their custom um, vibration alerts for certain people so they know when their phone's in their pocket. You know, we, we think of it as a custom ringtone. Mm -hmm. They do custom feedback, like the haptic. Yeah. And then also, you know, they use their, the, um, flash or flashlight flashes when the phone's ringing. Yeah. Um, this is another thing where you could actually do based on what it's hearing around you. Fire alarms and sirens, I think are, that's awesome. Uh, partner saying that he's he's uh, looking forward to this. Uh, the three cameras with time of flight sensor is exciting. That's exciting. I was in some of the other ones that are a little more at wallpaper. So if you remember, like if you go into your wallpaper settings, they have the dynamic and the stills and the live categories. Mm -hmm. They're now going to allow developers to put wallpaper packages in there. I've heard, you know, we're going to get a pencil kit like we have home kit. Mm -hmm. And the different kits, uh, Siri kit, uh, th they'll have a pencil kit to add additional feature functionality as well as the search. When you kind of swipe down and I don't know what your organizational skills are like on your phone, mine are horrible. Um, so I find myself when I'm looking for an app, a lot of times I just swipe down and start typing the name of the app to launch it. Mm -hmm. um, you'll be able to in that view that that search view you'll be able to sort by recently installed apps recent the apps with the most amounts of pending notifications things of that nature so so more context yeah pretty pretty cool stuff and i just feel like it's way too early for them to we shouldn't a, have this we yet. shouldn't have and also also these are things that are alluded to may not make the final ios 14 you but and, even when they don't make the final 14 like when they make the final rev Mm -hmm. they make like the dot one release yeah that's they usually might out by christmas like right remember multi um facetime mm -hmm. like they didn't have i don't think i think that was one of the things they did have yeah it came in like a point one point two later like a, yeah yeah point release so we you don't have to wait a whole nother year mm -hmm. unless you're waiting for iMessage on multiple platforms <laughs> which there's you be waiting a long time for that'll that. be something else that was a steve jobs thing like he claimed yeah. it was gonna come out and it never did yeah uh back to nintendo for a second reggie feels feels a me feels a me feels a me am i saying that right reggie nintendo's reggie that was a nintendo of america uh president and we loved them for so many years he's gone to the dark side chilla he's Where, joined he the board He's joined as not the board. He's joined as the Borg. No, what? <laughs> he yes, he's joined GameStop's board. GameStop, the physical store. But what does that actually mean? That like, means is... well, he is a visionary that helped Nintendo of America, right? 
And now you got GameStop that's been flailing for 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 years at this point, trying to figure things out. And then uh, he's going to be on GameStop, and maybe he won't. He could help reinvent. Um, he can help reinvent. He's going to help bring back physical media. <sighs> we uh, have the virus uh, has landed. This just in. Uh, we have uh, right here some um, Corona antidote uh, right here. In the studio, producer Missy has brought us. Apparently, I don't know. He's, wait, is this bad or is it the antidote? Is, is are we getting ourselves vaccinated with this? Sure, that's what we're doing. This is um, this is our no fear. It's like the corona. chicken pox party. Is this how we're getting through bowl. the mayhem show later? Yes, apparently. All right, we're just gonna put that over there so I don't get in trouble with that right now. And oh boy, like we do have a beer distributor right up the street, don't we? Uh, so, um, thank you for that, producer Missy. But I, I feel like is he gonna is he gonna bring back physical media? Like how? How is that going to work? No, well, I don't think it's a matter of bringing back physical media. It's a matter of what can these stores do. There's plenty of. Well, like, I'll, I'll tell you what the games, the game stops that have the retro section. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. You know, you know what, you know, so you know, you know what would be a great first step to not making GameStop feel like crap. Um, when I walk into GameStop and it doesn't feel like a teenager's closet. I mean, you're getting that view, that 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 too, right? I mean, it's just like there's just stuff everywhere, and half of it's toys and collectibles and pops, right? And stacks of old games, and it's not a pleasant experience. I think there's a lot of opportunity where, like, the Apple Store has become a destination for Apple things. Why can't a video game store be a destination for video game things, not just, you know, in in, in a different manner? He's gonna bring back the arcade. <laughs> if GameStop's become like a, you know, why why can't a GameStop become a partial looking for group? In Cor- that right. would be interesting. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, maybe make sure the kiosk works all the time. I don't know, it's little stuff like that. Somebody was uh, bemoaning the fact that because uh, you know being down there, they're like, hey, you need to visit the Last Think Geek store. I'm like, what do you mean Last Think Geek store? There was two of them in Orlando. Uh, one by one of the colleges, and there was another one that was right beside the GameStop, or maybe the one that was closed was right beside a GameStop. And they explained to me, um, I touched my face again. Uh, <laughs> they explained to me, um, yeah, so like they bought them, and then, you know, after they integrated all that crap into GameStop, they started kind of think geek started going away. They weren't doing very well, and they started closing the actual physical stores. And ThinkGeek mostly has been a dot com, right? That mm-hmm. we think about it. We ordered the stuff on ThinkGeek, and they always had fun items. Um, but they really kind of got disseminated when they got absorbed by GameStop. So it was it's still a cool store that has a bunch of stuff. But uh, yeah, I didn't get an opportunity to get back to Orlando to check it out. I was too busy chasing rockets. Um, <laughs> yeah, bring back Radio Shack. There you go. Give me my diode and cord store, guys. Exactly, exactly. But. Um, I don't know. So yeah, that's that's. I I think, I think there is an opportunity for a radical change to those spaces, to make them worthwhile. I can't tell you what that is, other than those kind of. I I mean, this guy's the thought leader. He hopefully he comes up with something and people listen to him. Otherwise, they wish they shouldn't have hired him, right? So, if anybody can do it, I believe in Reggie. Um, but anyways, hopefully. Maybe there'll be a Muppet Reggie again in our future. Do you remember my Muppet Reggie? No. The one uh Nintendo Direct where all of the execs turned were Muppets oh, that, yeah, when they were announcing it. games. For some I can't I don't know why they did it. Just everybody was a Muppet. Uh wasn't there some other Mario announcement today? Uh well it's Mario Day and Mario Kart went multiplayer uh opened up. Was that it? No, it was some kind of crossover. Something else. Oh, there's gonna be Mario Legos. Mario Legos. I saw an announcement. I think it might have been on Twitter. It was like a promoted. I think it was promoted by Lego. Mm. And it was like the coin box mm-hmm. was kind of flipping. So I'm wondering what we're going to see. That's a TV show you have to watch. What? Lego Masters. Oh, Lego Masters. That does look like fun. That it's looks like it. fun. No, but we're basically living Lego Masters over on Wrestling Mayhem Show. And I haven't done a Monday show in a couple weeks because reasons um illness and tiredness uh but uh but uh a uh, uh, part of it it's a wrestling show but we're, it's really just mike and i catching up and he completed an entire hogwarts set 
it was something like 6,000 pieces or something. No, I think it's more than that. It was four books of instructions. Wow. And it's huge. It's huge. Is, and, does it do the thing where you can like point your phone at it and it comes to life? I don't know. I don't know about that part. You should have him do that. I <laughs> will have to inquire about that then. Um, but no, it's, it's been a fun thing to see him build. He'll like kind of hold it up. And now he's working on some adventure stuff. So yeah, he, he has a few sets. This is I have Tony Stark's... Um, the all the Iron Man, mm -hmm. with the Hall. Okay, the the Hall of Iron Man from yeah. like Iron Man Three. Yeah, I have the, I have that Lego set, and we have some. I'll tell you what's cool: the Minecraft ones. Um, I didn't realize because I don't think they show it at least on some of the original boxes. But if you get a couple of the Minecraft sets, in the back of the instruction manual, it shows you how they actually can all join together. So oh, as cool. you build the Minecraft sets, you're they, building a giant you're Minecraft, You're building a giant Minecraft area. Nice. So I thought that was pretty cool. Nice. I like it. I like it. I remember old sets that we used to do that. Um, like hot wheels and things like that. Modern warfare has a Tamagotchi that's hungry for kills. I saw that, but I have to pay for it. <laughs> yeah. It's another $10 to get it. <laughs> <coughs> But uh, I'm earning some coins like I, I've been playing for a couple of weeks now mm -hmm. and I think I have like 400 coins. <coughs> Most of those things range from a thousand to two thousand. I'm mostly doing mobile because it has the old hijacked and uh, uh, modern warfare three black ops one maps that What's I love where it's really small and it's a bunch of container crates uh, container crates. I'm not well, I'm not sure it's like. It's a very small area. There's kind of like which game are you from? I think it's a modern. It's a modern warfare. Okay. Okay. And there's like container crates stacked, mm -hmm. and there's it's like a oh yeah, that's from three. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's that's it's it's, it's, it's like new, a it's like a dock and it has a bunch of those. There's that's in the new. It's in the new modern warfare. So they so not only that uh, modern warfare uh, 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 people that have that apparently got early access to this, but it's also rolling out free to everybody else. But there is a modern warfare. Oh crap! What was the name of it? <laughs> it was just a, Warzone? Warzone. Warzone. Um, I signed up for it and hopefully it's downloading on my Xbox One at home. Yeah, right it now. launched for warfare owners at mm -hmm. eleven a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and then it launched for new players at 3 p.m. What I'm interested so in So they gave seeing, everybody a whole four hours if you purchased the game before. That's interesting. What I'm interested in seeing is they're saying it supports cross-progression with Modern Warfare. Huh. And you can carry your Oh, unlocks. so when you... So as you build your progression and level up your character in Modern Warfare, that carries over to this and vice versa. Which so. I, I find interesting because when you think of the... Like when I think of Fortnite, right? Everyone's pretty... On a pretty level playing field. Yes. Like skins don't get you anything and yes. the weapons are all the same. Yes. I think bags may give you some capacity. Yeah. But that's about it. But this is going to give me, I'll have more weapons than But are player. you purchasing all the weapons and everything? I'm, or in are Modern you Warfare? in Modern Warfare? Is that how it works? No, no. no. Are, you're not, are you paying I'm, money to get these upgrades? Or is it just by playing this game? It's like the old school. It, you yeah. get to level two and I can yeah. finally get. This is just like another the, way to level up. It's just an additional yeah. way. Instead of putting time just into all these modes, you have another mode to apply to that. Yeah, but I guess I feel like when I think of like Apex Legends and when I think of Fortnite, the playing field's always level. Well, that's those games. Call of Duty does not work that way. That's why I get owned every freaking time I drop into a new game. But I feel like this breaks the rules for like the... No, it, it's adding... No, no, because that's the game for Apex and Fortnite. But those are like the this original Battle still, Royales. Right. So you're taking those rules for multiplayer for Call of Duty, which are you level up. I don't have all my unlocks. I don't have all my attachments. I don't have all to my gun and the multiple guns and, and, and this update and score streaks. So, I mean, the other ones don't have score streaks, right? I'm getting real Call of Duty because I really just kind of got back into it. Um, I went like three or four game releases straight on Call of Duty and 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 fell out of it on the 360. Um, stupid ghosts, ghosts ruined everybody. Um, but anyways, but uh, I mean that's how Call of Duty is. But they're just adding a battle royal mode on that layer, right? 
So think about it that way, not that this is a fortnighting of wow. Call of Duty. This is a Call of Duty. 83 this, to 101 this, gig download. Yes. Um, I was thinking about dropping it. Well, it's not even compatible with my Mac. I was like, come on, GeForce. Come on, Blizzard Activision. Please support GeForce again so I can just play this game <laughs> on my on any of my uh, uh, PC Macs. Uh, anyways, oh, GeForce. GeForce is driving us. Hey, everybody's dropping off of GeForce, but Ubisoft and Epic have pledged their support for GeForce now, and, and Tim Sweeney of Epic is actually pleading with publishers to get on GeForce now. So right now, the, the next game I was going to play, Borderlands Enhanced Edition, is no longer on it. Thank you, uh, 2K Games, for dropping off. Also, Do they uh, say why they're dropping off? It's deals or whatever. They're not. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with them. But either way, it's like it's another place. It's another reason for me to buy your game and play it on PC. It opens that up. I don't get it. Right? Um, and NVIDIA, at least at this point, is not making any money other than, like, well, right now nobody's paying money. But in three months, I'll be paying five bucks a month for it. Mm-hmm. Not if I beat Arkham Origins and I have nothing else to play. So, yeah, that yeah, I'm playing a late 360 game on this thing. That's what I'm <laughs> doing with this. Um, but anyways, who knows? Okay, at that point, hey, Chilla. At Chilla on the Twitter. ChillaTech.net. Chilla something. 579 on, 579 on Instagram, on Instagram. and stuff. I uh, want to give a shout out, a uh, friend of the show, if uh, people uh, saw the public announcement, our good friend uh, Dutters uh, just had an announcement about um, uh, um, what's going on in her life over there um, on her uh, Instagram, Kate, Kate Marie PGH and everything. So I just want to send some awesome cast love out to her. Um, so you can read up on that, but just uh, yeah, want to put that out there uh, right now because I know you guys haven't seen her on the show for a few weeks. So, I mean, she's going through some mm-hmm. stuff and uh just want to kind of put a uh, vote of support out to her for that and uh and uh yeah so uh please uh, go check that out if you want to read up on uh what's going on uh with her uh kate marie pgh on the instagram and uh let's check out her badass pictures katie does things the katie way yes where i have bad news but guess what and i believe the term is bounty hunter unicorn right now so uh, uh go check that out and and of course uh, that's not the last of what she's going to be doing uh around that as well because of course uh Dutters is multimedia in everything she does in life uh as as a lot of us here on the awesome cast so uh appreciate that and please uh go go check out what's going on with her there um so at sorgatron on twitter thank you producer missy for um curing uh, getting us make sure we're safe from the coronavirus by uh preloading us with some corona and uh, I guess I didn't say that out loud on audio, so sorry about that, podcasters. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just got a six-pack of Corona here, uh, ready for the uh, Wrestling Mayhem show. Uh, thank you, everybody that's been joining us in the chat room all night long. We'll be back next week, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, on the Facebook Live and other streaming platforms if you want to join us there. And please subscribe, uh, rate, review us, and, uh, and, and sh- if you like what's going on here, share it on Twitter, share it on your social media, LinkedIn, wherever that case may be. And, uh, and, and and help spread the awesome. Thank you guys so much. Uh, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.